If you don't know, having a right has meshes on collision calculation is pretty bad and it's going to cost a lot on your CPU processing power. So one of the things you can do is to simplify this a little further. And one of the things you can do is to create a material and just change the color here on the surface so you have an idea of what it's going to look like and you have to enable here. And you can also enable the wireframe only on this here so we can actually see only the wireframe of the collision mesh. And you can simplify this until you start to see yeah almost like so so this should be good to go as a collision mesh if you notice some red areas that's mostly because of the some duplication or bugs because of the welds and you can repeat the previous steps to fix that but i think overall this is pretty good so let's apply this now, for Goodo to know that this is a static collider, the only thing you need to do is at the end of the name, you need to place call only. So this is going to be interpreted as collision only on the import process in Goodo. And this is going to generate a static body with this mesh here as applied to it. So there we go. You have one mountain mesh terrain mesh to use and one of the things you can do later this is just a tip you can delete these points and voila you're going to have a somewhat decent mesh to put together so yeah i'm going to leave with the plane just so we know the orange of this mesh you also remember to always apply your scale and rotations when importing to Goodo to avoid any issues. So now I am going to parent the collision mesh to our high res mesh. Let's rename this to terrain test 01. And let's place here terrain collision and there we go you all have the mesh so now let me grab the terrain test and duplicate this time using alt d so this is a links duplication whenever we added the source we're adding the original one so let's go through the shader now to make the terrain masking process we just talked about in the intro so let's go over to shading Let's select our terrain and add a new shader here. So our shader is going to work with the idea of being diffuse only. So I'm not going to apply any specular roughness or anything else. It's just going to work with a, the base color. So it's a diffuse base terrain. So one of the things is maximize the roughness. So we don't want any reflections here. So the first thing we want here is to have a couple of image nodes. So let's add here some texture image. The first one, and let me enable snapping here. The first one is going to be our terrain mask. So our terrain mask image is going to be this guy. Then next we're going to add here a so next we're going to add, I'm just renaming these so the names make sense. So the next one is going to be black texture. Next one is going to be a red texture. One as green and one as blue. So the shader is not really that complicated. Black this guy up and let's add here a, and you can press Ctrl T to do automatically add here. So we want our main mask to be UV based. So that is important. So for the black texture, I'm going to load here an image. And you can go over the images from the open game art and you're going to select a couple of them. 
So I'm going to select, let's see, one of these. Now that you have selected a texture for each one, so you can see here which textures they are. And let me just disable those gadgets there. So you can see the black texture is that guy. The mask doesn't have anything yet. The red one is that. The green and the blue texture. So now that you have everything like that, one of the things you are going to need is an image for the mask of the terrain for this mesh. So we want a terrain mask RGB layers. And we're going to paint over this image the, the mask layer we want. So here you can put something quite low res. So for this asset, I think 64 by 64 is enough. And we do not want alpha here. And by default, let's leave it black color. And let's click OK. Now we have this image here which is very low res compared to the other ones you can see 64 by 64 this is going to contain the terrain mask information and but how you're going to separate all of these so you're going to use the we're going to use the separate color which is this guy here so this guy here is going to split the our mask here into rgb colors so now we want a RGB mix for each channel. So this one is between the black and the red texture. This is between the result of the previous one or the green one. And this should be the result of the previous one on the blue texture. So how are we going to do this? Is the black texture should be on A, the red texture should be on B. And the factor that's going to mix both of these is going to be, let's say, the red channel. So let me just rearrange this and we actually want to clamp the results of this mixture so this is just for blender as a preview so that's everything we're going to do the green channel is going to be the factor for the next mixture and the blue channel is going to be the factor for the next mixture the result of the first mixture is going to be here on a and so forth then we're going to grab here the green texture and apply here. And here we're going to grab the blue texture and apply it to B. So now we should have a RGB mask here to split it up. And you can organize this by pressing shift and when you right click is going to create a division on the nodes. So let's just organize this a little bit. You can see it's a lot easier to understand what exactly is happening here. As you can see, this is not a pretty complicated tree by all means, but it's going to work adequately as we want. And one of the things you, you want to do is you're going to need to save this image here. So whenever you create a new image, this image will always be deleted if it's not on use. One of the things you can do is click here, go to image and actually pack this image. So this image is going to be a saved as a embedded data inside the blend file so it's going to be sticked up with the blend file so at the moment it's not packing because it has nothing to pack you can see that this symbol here is it means that the image is currently packed into the blend file so this one is not yet packed because it has nothing no information to store so now let's go here and let's unwrap this. I think it's already unwrapped due to the techniques we did previously on one modeling. So let's let everything just do a final unwrap here. All right. So now we can go here on the shading and let's go to texture paint. So here's where the magic is going to happen. So we want to go here and let's go to tools and i want to select here the texture slot that i want to paint is the rgb layers if you select this you're going to paint over the other images we only want to paint over this rgb layers mask here and then you also want to paint here using a color palette so you can actually create a color palette and add here all the colors we want so let's add here 
Okay, pure red. We can switch between these two fairly quickly. And let's add here actually the black one so it's easy for us to pick. Now we can start by selecting the green and just painting the green here. And you can see it's fairly low res. But that is expected. So let me just paint here the three colors so we can have something to test on the shaders back there. And this is the image that you're going to want to import on Godot later and apply the shaders based on the color. And I'm going to provide on the second part of this tutorial the shaders, all the details and everything. So stay tuned for the next part. So something like this. Now if I go, you can see a star up here and means that the image has been changed. And let's do pack, and I believe this now works. And you can see here the image has been packed. So now we have the result here. We all, the last thing remaining is to grab the result and link to our base color. And tada! You have now a material preview of what is going to look like in Gudo. And you can see it looks somewhat interesting. You're mixing four textures here. So that is the limit of this shader technique. You're going to have only up to four textures per mesh. And this is not that bad as it sounds. It's quite a lot to have actually four textures to be mixed together. And the interesting thing is because this is a, a masked layer, what you can do is on texture paint, any application here also works. So you can actually blur this and you're going to see the result so i don't know if i i think i can do here a hard tells all split enable the 3d viewport so i can actually see this guy and enable the texture here and let's clean this up so we can now start to see what it's going to look like and now you can use smudge and you can see in real time what is happening here. And you can also select a color palette here and reduce the strength of the painting. So you're going to paint it a little bit. And you can see it works pretty nicely. So whenever there is black here, it's going to be applied one texture. Whenever it's green is another texture and whenever it's red, another texture. And that works for four textures in total. So this is pretty nice and I think it's pretty useful to make terrains this way and the performance is actually a lot better because you're only using four textures to make everything here. So let me just do some painting here and you can see here the results. Let's say that the blue is for the mountains here. Let's just paint the blue on the mountains to create some structure for this type of terrain we are making here. So here you can see that the density of the mask we did is somewhat important to the asset. So for performance reasons, we made it 64 by 64. But depending on the asset, you're probably going to want to change that. So you have better or less details. You can see here we have an issue. So this is some areas we can later change. Probably on the UV editor. Yeah, you can see here it has some issues. This area here on the UV editor is going to show up to have an issue. So I can see if I select it. Yep, you can see that it was throw it off. So if I grab that vertice, we can see it was categorized as an error, so we can safely delete it. So there it goes, an extra edge. It had some issues. Another thing you can do here on the shader, and remember that everything you do here, you will have to do this replicated inside Godot some way. 
because you cannot import this unless you bake it. And by baking it, you're going to lose the ability to be a type of shader we are making. But what I was talking about is you can apply here the scale. So the terrain is going to change quite a bit. So depending on the scale of this terrain module, you can increase the scale until you are happy with. But if you increase the scale too much, you're going to see the tiled texture issue we have here. And there are other techniques to mask this behavior here. But it basically is all about the asset scale you want. And I think by 4 or 3, it should be enough here. So there we go. You should have now a nice workflow to generate a terrain mesh, the collision mesh as well. So that is basically everything you have to do in Blender. The next step should be to import the, the textures we use here on the shader inside Godot, including our terrain mask. So this image will need to go here and go and you can see that the image has been changed here so make sure you always save the image every time you see a little star here the image has been updated but not has been saved yet so it's pretty important you save the image after you're painted over it remember this it's going to give you a lot of less headaches so you're going to save a copy or save this image as something and then you can import this on Gideo. In the next part, we're going to see how we're going to make a shader to mix these textures using the layer mask with shader codes. So until then, I hope you had fun with this video here tutorial. And everything that I showed you here is going to change as well, depending on the type of assets you want to create. So this is just one of the techniques you can employ to make terrain for game assets. And you can see it's pretty low poly and it's awesome, man. And it's pretty easy to come up with terrains like this. The next step would be to add rocks, trees, and add objects to your game. So this is pretty good. And just like I said, the idea is for you to start to create multiple modular assets. And you're basically manipulating this and putting it against one another. You're going to start by making your own world. And you can see this works. And the clipping here is not that visual noticeable. You can, of course, change the geometry. And there are many ways you can make terrains using this. So hopefully you had fun with this video. And I'll see you on the next one until we build our good old shader. See you on the next one, guys.